Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the new Synology login portals for DSM-7. Now these login portals have always been there, so they were inside of DSM-6 as well. The main difference is that in DSM-7 there is a totally different login style, meaning that every single application will have its own login page and it will look slightly different than the other ones. In DSM-6, it was the same blue background that you would probably normally log into DSM with. The only difference is there was a little icon in the bottom right. So this is a little bit more professional looking and it's just a lot easier to distinguish what you're logging into. So to access the login portals, you can open up the control panel and then you can select login portal. And the first thing you're gonna get brought to is DSM. So inside of there, you're gonna have a login style and you can go in and customize that if you'd like. If you'd like to give a specific page title, you can, and you can change the background as well. They also give you an option to display a message so you can kind of put in a welcome title or a welcome message. I don't know how useful that is for everybody, but the option is there. These settings are really just there to customize the look and feel, but you'll also notice that you can change the DSM ports here. And this is something that I suggest that everybody does. By default, it's gonna be 5000 and 5001. You could change this to be anything you'd like. It just has to be something that's not currently in use. At the bottom there, you're gonna see that you can point a registered domain to DSM. Now this can be a NetBIOS name, which is basically just the local name. So if you're accessing this on your local network and you wanted to name your NAS Synology NAS, for example, you'd be able to access it by SynologyNAS.local. That's just an example. It's gonna be different for everybody, but the key here is that you can point to a registered domain if you'd like. Now that's DSM and it's relatively limited in what you can change. But what we're gonna be focusing on in this video is the application section. So if you head over to the application side, you're gonna see a few different login portals. And these login portals will exist depending on the applications that you have installed on your NAS. So if you are using something like Active Backup for Business, like I am, you'll have a login portal for that. However, if Active Backup for Business is not installed, you're not gonna have anything listed there. So this will go based on what you have installed. Now file station is installed by default, so that should exist for everybody. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is that every single application has its own login style. And this is what I was pointing at a little earlier, that it's just a little bit more professional looking. So if you're using this for a small business, or even if you're using this for a home network, it's just a cleaner interface that gives you a very quick and easy way to understand exactly what you're gonna be logging into. DSM-6 was not like that. Not a big deal now, but it is different from how DSM-6 was. Now you can go in and you can edit any of these uh, portals, and we're gonna look at some of those settings now. So the first thing you're gonna see is you can change the login style. Now this will be the background. This existed inside of DSM-6 as well. Um, so you can go in, change this if you like, but the default ones are pretty nice. Um, however, we're gonna look at the web services here. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is you have three options, alias, customized port for HTTP and HTTPS. Now the alias can be used if you want to access any of these applications by URL. So if I come in here and I type in active backup, what you're gonna see is that I can log into this portal here at the IP address of my Synology NAS forward slash active backup. So whatever you put here, that will allow you to log into that application as long as you append that alias to the end of the URL. Now keep in mind that this will work for external traffic as well. So if you have DDNS set up and you access your NAS outside of your local network, if you append at the end of the URL that alias, just by setting it here, you will automatically be able to get to that login page. Now I'm not suggesting that you access your NAS using DDNS, I'm just simply saying that it will work if you are using DDNS. If you do wanna access your NAS outside of your local network, I suggest that you set up OpenVPN on your NAS. I'll leave a pop-up for that video now. Um, but realistically, you can use any VPN server. It doesn't have to be the VPN server on your NAS. It's just kind of an easy way to set it up if you don't have anything else to run it on. So moving on, you're gonna see customized port. Now at the bottom, you have HTTPS and you have HTTP at the top. You generally will want to use HTTPS. 
Um, there are probably very few reasons you'd want to use HTTP. So realistically, you can only fill out that bottom one if you want to. Um, and if you're accessing this outside of your local network, you should absolutely only be using HTTPS. Um, that will just ensure that traffic is encrypted back and forth. So you can change these to be whatever you want. So for example, let's assume that you want to access Synology photos outside of your local network, but you don't want to expose your entire NAS outside of your local network. What you can do is you can come in here and you can customize the port to be something different. We'll say 7004, for example. Um, and 7004, when you change that, you're going to be able to access this using that port. So if you have DDNS set up and you port forward, port 7004, you'll be able to access the Synology Photos login portal outside of your local network. There's also other ways of doing it. You can use a, uh, a reverse proxy. Um, the key here to understand is that you're exposing the service, but you're not exposing all of DSM. So that is what this section kind of allows you to do. So once again, this is not a security video. I am not suggesting that you use DDNS to access Synology Photos or any of these other services. I'm just giving you an example of what you can do. So if you have a custom domain, you can come here and you can add that as well. So this can be used for external traffic or it can be used for internal traffic. Um, this also gives you the option similar to DSM where you can come in here and enter the NetBIOS name. You don't have to do that, but you can. This is just another way that you can access this login portal. Now at the bottom here, you're gonna see access control profile, and this is actually super powerful. So this allows you to create an access control profile and limit who can access this service. So it works very similar to Synology's firewall, and what you'll have to do is you'll have to deny all traffic, but then you can specify who can access this service. So if you have specific IP addresses or you have a specific IP range or a subnet, you can come in here and you can say that those devices are the ones that can access this service. However, everybody else should be blocked. So this is extremely similar to Synology's firewall, but it is on the service in specific. So this is powerful because if you're using something like Synology's reverse proxy server, you can't go in in Synology's firewall and stop all traffic for port 443 because that will block traffic for all of your reverse proxies. However, you can go in and you can create different access control profiles for every single one of those services. So that's the key distinction there. It can be used in tandem with Synology's firewall if you want to limit all traffic on port 443 or you can manage it separately and say that this one service should have this access and this other service should have this access. So if you wanna modify the access control profiles after you create them, they will be in the advanced section. And speaking of Synology's reverse proxy server, if you're interested in learning how that works, I'll leave a pop-up for that now. So that is how Synology's login portals work. That's how you can separate these services. So keep in mind, that it is dependent on what is installed. So the ones I've used, I know that Audio Station has one, um, Active Backup for Business, Synology Photos, File Station, Synology Drive, but I know that I'm missing some. So it really is dependent on whatever packages you have installed. You'll see them in this list. You don't have to add them. They'll automatically get added after installation. But you can go in and you can modify these at this point, and then hopefully you can start to access these services directly. So if you want to upload something to FileStation, for example, you don't have to go inside a DSM. You can just go straight to FileStation. So if this video helped you guys out, please give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.